on the guy. You may have to change your position. You may have to work something else. Just keep working and keep, keep working. See how tra transition over, transition over. You know, whatever you need to do to stay on them and never let go of them. And that's the key thing okay, to gutter fighting. Okay, some uh, gutter fighting. Okay, years ago, I used to, when I was coaching a lot of judo and sambo and a lot of kids, you know, the rules allowed you to, in judo in those days, certainly sambo still do, to get on the ground and spend a lot of time in ground fighting. Well, you know, I always kind of equated that to two guys in a bar fight and they're in the gutter and they're gutter fighting, okay? And so we just call it gutter fighting kind of stuck and it's kind of a cool name and so we'll still use that. But fundamentally what it is, you get a guy down and you don't let him up. You get his back, you keep his back, you keep breaking him down. Your goals of this are get his back, get control, keep control, keep riding him where he has no, you know, ride is just you know, stay in controlling position. Uh, take, keep breaking him down. Take things away from him. Take his posture away from him. Take his base away from him. Take his fitness away from him. Keep working him. Sap his strength. Take his confidence away from him. That's what gutter fighting is all about. So it's just staying it's kind of a relentless, relentless grinding stuff. Um, one of our guys who was the best at it was, I think, Chris Hecadon. He would grind people until they just kind of wanted to quit, you know. And he was a great gutter fighter. So that's what we're going to do here. So the first thing we'll start is a good way to hit it in. Uh, Eric is going to be on his elbows and knees. Derek has just knocked him down, whatever. And Derek's going to add stuff in. I am going to still really yapping. But key thing what Derek wants to do now is get Eric's back. He wants to get his back and not give it up. He's going to get the hooks in and control. Okay, so why don't you kind of describe what you want to do there. Okay. Yeah. So step one for this is this might have come off of a, a snap down or a, a failed foot sweep or he might have tried to, to shoot a double or a throw and he just collapses down and this is a, a turtled up position, He's, it's purely defensive. So take advantage of it. Number one, I want to control his head and his shoulders so he doesn't get his head up and start getting close to an equal footing with me. So I keep my dominant hand on his head and then I'm going to rotate around the other side. Okay, That way I can keep control of his head and his shoulders as I go. The important part is I'm controlling him and I'm keeping hands on him so that I'm not just running around here to get his back and then get my hooks in because he could just bail out, okay? So keep your hands on them as we come around, okay? I'm gonna get in, I prefer the wrestler's ride from here with the caveat that my foot isn't in between his feet to keep him from being able to do a rolling knee bar. It's right here, he grabs that knee, comes across for the rolling knee bar. So I keep my knee in his butt to keep him from going back that way and I keep my foot on the side, okay? Alternately, you could be up here just as easily because if you start standing ride, this right. is what we call a standing ride. Right, and I've seen other people do the the frog ride and stuff. I don't necessarily like that because there's some pretty easy transitions out of it. But standing or modified wrestlers, either one's just just fine. Okay, from there, get a wrist ride. Okay, doesn't matter which one you want. The near side obviously is going to be easier, but sometimes that doesn't work, and you got to go for the the far side, right? So we pop up, we reach across, and we pull that arm up, okay? And what this does is it's, it starts the gutter fight. I'm taking away some of his, his base. He now has to hold himself up as well as me. The other thing that that helps is if I can post over here, I can throw that hook in by pulling him up with the wrist rod. Over here, you can see this here. Okay, so whereas if I tried to put my hook in and he was being super defensive, he could block that hook with his elbow and his hand and now I'm back to square one. This way, I dig in, I get a hold of that wrist, and I can just pop my foot in because I pulled up and made some space, right? I keep a hold of that hook, I transition up and do a, you know, you can call it a, a back half ride, get the other hook, pull that up, and get my feet in there. Now I've got double wrist ride with two hooks in and he's carrying my entire weight. And then you just flatten him out, okay? From here, choke, arm lock, whatever that you want to do, you can unhook, pull him back over into a pin. The, the point is, he's carried my weight the whole time, and he has the, the mental problem now of knowing that I just completely collapsed him. Okay? And if you can't co collapse him, you can do a rodeo ride, or a you know, seated rodeo ride. So, try that one real quick here. Okay. So, here we go again. Pop that up, hook in, 
the other one, the second hook in, okay? And then now we're in the rodeo ride. If I need to and I can't flatten them out, I can roll them, use the hooks, and sit up. And now I've got control of his shoulders and his hips, and I've got his back. Notice everybody, he's seated on his butt, Derek is. He's not putting, he's not on his back. You know, you, you, don't, want, you don't want to carry your opponent on you. you. You don't want to be here, okay? Because that's not a good advantage. You want to have his back. Now you've got a lot of control over this guy. Okay, from here you can do a choke. How about doing this for the juji from there maybe too? So you've got a choke from there, spin over, you got a juji. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do from there, okay? Key, key thing here is, guys, in this first set of drills we're going to be doing here, get his back, keep his back, okay? And that's a key thing in grappling. Um, wrestlers get points for lives. We don't. Whatever grappling sport, fighting sport, we, we don't get points for that. We have to make him submit a pin until we make him submit too. So that's what we want to do. We get his back, keep his back, okay? And those little things we did, we control the wrists, and we control the hooks into the legs, control our feet on his hips. You know, let's get to the leg control, let's do the leg rest. Okay? All those things work. Just keep taking things away from him. Take control of his posture, you know, um, control his movement, uh, you know, um, to take away his confidence by just riding him. And, and you can keep a guy here, like get, get, a, get a back right again, get, get his back. Now watch, you got a really tough guy. There's some guys who won't, you know, they're not going to buy in. He's, he's going to posture up, he's going to do whatever he can. You know, just keep beating on the guy. You may have to change your position. You may have to work something else. Just keep working and keep, keep working. See how tra transition over, transition over, you know, whatever you need to do. To stay on them and never let go of them. And that's the key thing to gutter fighting is you just stay with them. Okay, so in other words, keep his back. That's fundamental. So we're going to drill on that a bit tonight, guys. Then we're also going to drill a bit on if you're in the guard, or from the, a lot of guys like to fight off their butt in the guard position, we're going to work on getting from the guard to getting to his back. And that's, where, that's, that's a really good skill to learn. We're going to work on that tonight, too. After that, we'll work on some throws, and then we'll run the and have some fun. But right now, let's work on these drills. Everybody see what, get his back. We'll come around and help you. Everybody's going to do it a little bit differently, but kind of the same idea. Okay, let's work there.